Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Tom Rolfe, and I am the main contact and transition manager for all the great brokers who join Coldwell Banker Danforth. Welcome to our second in our monthly series of Ninja Selling Lessons. You guys are really going to enjoy Clara Capano, our master ninja instructor. I love that term. The agenda is pretty straightforward. I've got the quick intro where you go to Clara and she loves questions, so she'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you've got questions throughout the session, please use the Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom window. So let's get right down to it. Clara, you ready to go? I am ready. I see that I am not able to share my camera again, so I don't know if you need to activate that for me. Well, let's fix that. Awesome. And while we are doing that, I'll just kind of let you guys know about some of the upcoming ones that we have. We are going to do another session on August 13th, and it's a class on knowing your value. You know, this is so important to us as being a trusted advisor because we know that 80% of the population will pay a full fee when they deem there is value. So I want to talk with you about not only identifying your value that you bring, but also how do we articulate that and how do we show that to all the other people. There we go. There I am. Thank you so much. And then on September 10th, we're going to talk about eliminating distractions or managing distractions. You know, distractions are going to happen whether we want them or not, and they're not going away anywhere. So the best thing that we can do is come up with strategies to help us better manage them. Okay. Now it's not letting me share my, oh, there we go. Okay. We're in business now. So I look forward to seeing you then for those two, and we are going to have a great time. Today, we are talking about the opportunity that was in front of you. I love this class. This is, again, a portion of our big ninja training. And the idea is there is so much business in front of us, but oftentimes we get caught up in the day-to-day -day interactions that we sometimes are missing the opportunity. Also, it comes down to our mindset. You know, there are really two mindsets out there. There that's the mindset of abundance, and there's the mindset of scarcity. And I see it often with people that I talk with, depending on the market conditions. In this case, it was COVID. You know, the market's going to tank. There's going to be no business going on. Well, the idea is this. What you focus on expands. And if you are focused on the scarcity, that's what you're going to find. What we want to do is we want to change things. And we want to get you into the mindset of abundance the mindset of looking and positioning yourself to find the opportunities that are out there. Now with Ninja, as I shared before, Ninja is a system. What we find, and this comes more from the National Association of Realtors, is that only about 6% of realtors nationwide have some sort of system that they follow consistently. What happens to the other 94% is they get pulled off the path. They get interrupted, uh, distracted by all those shi shiny, bright objects, all those other distractions that are out there. But with Ninja, we focus on the system. And when you work the system, the results start working for you. One of the things that Tom and I were talking about before this is that when you are working in abundance and when you are focusing on your clients and bringing value to your clients, you don't need to create business. Business will be created for you. So it helps you again build that sustainability, not just the abundance in your business. So since we're talking about mindset, there's two mindsets when it comes to really looking at the market for us brokers. There is the transaction mindset and there is the referral mindset. So let's talk about the transaction mindset. The transaction mindset is just like it talks about. It's focused on finding the deal. What we know right now is that the average person is moving about every eight years. So what happens with this is they have the mindset that, okay, I just met with someone, I'm done with them, and I'm moving on to the next. This is where that concept of past clients comes in. And the thing with Ninja is we don't have past clients. We have clients. And think about it this way with other trusted advisors that we have. I don't go and see my CPA. And then when I leave, my CPA says, well, there goes Clara. She's a past client. No, I'm a client. And I meet with her regularly. 
we want to create that same paradigm. So we don't want to have that transaction mindset. But let's talk about how the transaction mindset can also impact you in your business. A lot of the disruptors that are out there, such as Zillow, all of those ones that we see, they are designed with the transaction mindset in mind. And what they do is they are, again, looking for those deals as they're coming. So you can see in the pie here, each, each piece represents a year out of the eight year cycles, one through eight. And then the one that's green is sort of when they're getting ready to, to do another move. Well, what happens is the algorithms for all these distractions are designed to find people that are going into that eighth year. So what they do is they just put all their calculations together and they say, who is having a chance of moving? So there is no relationship involved. All they are doing is looking for the people that have a greater chance of moving. And then they are pushing all of those leads out to the real estate population. And realtors are paying for those and clamoring for those leads. And the industry becomes a bit of a mosh pit. It's not real predictable, it's not real purposeful, and it definitely isn't sustainable. You know, I've been in the business since 1993. The internet wasn't even around back then as far as finding business. I don't know where the internet's gonna be in another 15, 20 years, but I do know where my sphere of influence is going to be. And so with Ninja, we wanna get out of the transaction mindset and we wanna get into the referral mindset. So there was a study done by a company called Harris Interactive. And what they found, and this also was substantiated by the National Association of Realtors, is that people will run into about four other people in any given year that are going to do a real estate transaction. So I'm going to say that again. The average person will run into four other people in any given year that is going to do something in real estate. So this is why we need to focus on the referral business and also the relationship business. Because what that means is the opportunity to serve people is so abundant for us, but we have to be in tune for it. You know, we have to start thinking about what about your sphere of influence? And so I'll just use some simple numbers here. What if you had 50 people in your sphere of influence? And let's just even change that right here. We don't want just 50 people. We want relationships. So let's say that you have 50 households that you have relationships with in your sphere of influence. How many potential leads could there be? 200, 50 times four. Now, again, we may not get all of those leads, but think about if you got 200 leads from people that you have tight relationships with. The quality of lead is, first of all, going to be much higher than just a standard regular lead. But with 200 higher quality leads, even if only 10% of those did something, that's still 20 transactions. So you can see how powerful it is and how much abundance is in front of us. So let's go back to our wheel here. Again, we have our same eight-year eight -year, um, eight cycle. What's going to happen at this first year? is we are either going to just be starting a relationship because we just met them and now we want to start the relationship with them, or we are going to continue the relationship because maybe they closed and now they're entering into a new eight-year cycle. But remember, we don't have past clients. We have clients. So not only are we taking time to serve and connect with our people during the transaction, we are also taking time to stay with them and serve them between the transactions. And we talked a lot about this on our last session and how to add value. And we talked about adding value as a trusted advisor, as well as adding value as a human being. So now what we do is we have that referral mindset in mind. And you can see as we go through all the different years, you can see every year we have the potential to get four new leads. And then we go ahead and we bump up to six in year eight. Why does that happen? Well, because now they're probably in that cycle as well where they may be getting ready to buy and sell again. So what we find is that over the course of one life cycle, one eight year cycle for one person in our sphere of influence, we actually have the potential for 34 transactions. You know, they may decide to move at year four or year six 
And if we stay in flow with them, we will pick up those transactions as well. But 34 potential transactions from one relationship every eight years. And here's the caveat. Most people, again, are not in with us for just one year, one life cycle, rather. A lot of people work for us, work with us for three or four life cycles. The average is four. The average time that a client is with us from start to finish is about 32 years. So 34 times four life cycles, 136 potential transactions from one relationship if we nurture it the right way. Now, I saw that a couple questions came in. Tom, do we have some questions that we want to go to? There's not really anything at this time, Corey. Okay, great, excellent. So again, the life cycle is about 32 years for one relationship. So let's take a deeper look at this. 136 possible transactions. What is your average commission? Now, the one here is $8,000. That's the national average. Now, I know in your market, it's probably higher than that. I know for me, mine is probably two and a half times that amount. My average sales price is about $650,000. So I'm looking at each transaction being worth about $17,000 to $20,000. So you can see how that works. And then think about how many people do you have in your sphere? The thing that we really want to have you notice here is that one relationship can be worth well over a million dollars to you. So if one relationship can yield you a million dollars, can you see the power of taking care of your clients? Can you see the power of staying in flow with them and not just showing up for them when they want to buy and sell, but showing up for them all the time? and making sure that we are there serving them. So I want you to go ahead and do this right now. Oh, Tom, do we have a question? I saw you unmute. Actually, I was just going to add something to this. As, as the referrals come in, if you take really good, of, good care of your existing clients, they're going to be more in tune to the referrals in their sphere that are potentially available to send to you because they know that it helps you and, and there's something in it for them, whatever it is you're doing for them for the referral. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and the, one of the reasons, again, we, we take such good care of them is, you know, it's that connecting. And if we take good care of our clients, our clients will take good care of us. And, you know, it just, again, we don't have to create the business. The business will actually be created for us by the people that we are working with. So I encourage us to look at these numbers, but let's look at them for you. So, you know, wherever you are, get a piece of paper out or get your calculator out. How many households do you have in your sphere of influence? You know, you don't have to have the exact number, but maybe round it up, 50, 100, 250. You know, multiply that by four to look at the abundance of possible leads that you could be yielding each year. And then multiply that by your average percent of commission per transaction, you know, and you have to start looking at what are you leaving on the table? So for me, you know, if I'm looking at this, now granted, I'm not a full-time broker anymore. I'm not selling full-time, but I have about 35 households that would be in my sphere of influence. Multiply that times four, there's about 140 opportunities in there. You know, and if I multiply that by, say, $17,000, it's 23 million. You know, that's a lot of money that's in there. You know, even if I just got one lead from each of them, if I got one lead from each of them and have 35 leads, and let's just say even only half of those turned into something, that's about 17 transactions. 17 transactions times $17,000 is just under $300,000 a year that I could be making in real estate. I'm not making that in real estate. So this is a real eye opener for me as well because last year I probably made about $26,000 because I only did a couple of transactions. This is a real eye opener for me that I'm probably not doing as good of a job as I can be doing with my sphere of influence. Now, again, I don't want to be doing this full time, but even if I just amped it up a little bit, if I could even get half of this, that's $150,000. 
I could go on a lot of vacations for $150,000. I could donate that money. I could buy more investment properties. But when you start looking at these numbers, you start looking at the abundance that is in your own backyard. Now, as a coach, I can't tell you how many times a year that I have people come to me, especially when we are doing business planning, and they tell me, oh, I can buy this new zip code, or oh, I'm thinking about getting you know, a park bench, or you know, a bus bench, or whatever it is. And the conversation I have with them is, are we using our sphere and leveraging our sphere enough right now? The analogy I give is an orange. If the sphere is our orange, are we squeezing all the juice out of that orange before we start going and eating another orange? Because for most of us, we are just tapping the surface of the abundance that could be in our backyard. And I know that this may sound crazy, but I promise you it is true. And I see this. And what I start doing is when I have them start reinvesting back in to their relationships, magic happens. Todd, do we have a question? One of our listeners had a suggestion for you. They said, if you don't want to do real estate full time, you could certainly take those leads and refer them off to somebody. I know. And that is exactly what I'm working on over this COVID time. I've partnered up with a couple of people in my, in my room so, or in my area, because that's exactly what I'm doing. But you see, even me as a coach, sometimes I miss it too. So, you know, we're all human. And I know if I'm missing it, other people are missing it too. So as an example of this, I had one of my coaching clients and I was working with him. He lives in South Carolina and he came to me and he was ready to invest in a billboard and the billboard was going to cost him around $4,500. And we were talking about it and I said, okay, you know, let's talk about this and let's look at this. And I said, where is the billboard going to be? It was going to be in a part of town where he really didn't have a great amount of sphere. And I said, so you're going to be on a billboard. So who's going to be calling you? Strangers are going to be calling you who are not even in the part of town where you want to be focusing on your business. I said, what if, because you're already okay paying $4,500, you've already decided that you're okay paying that. What if we took that $4,500 and reinvested that back into our sphere, back into our relationships? And so that's what he decided to do because it made good business sense. And he ended up having two client appreciation events. And then he put that money into doing other more one-on-ones with um, his you know, sphere of influence, more coffees, more lunches, and doing a few more mailings. Within four months, his business was up 32%. And it was just all coming in through sphere. And what I love here is Simon Sinek is somebody that I follow and I love Simon Sinek. He was a speaker at the Inman conference a couple of years ago. And if you're familiar with Inman, it's sort of like mini TED talks and they have people come up and talk about certain topics and they sit on a couch. Well, at this specific one, everybody was talking about technology and the brilliance of technology. And don't get me wrong. I love technology too. Technology is what is allowing us to be together today. But Simon was the last speaker. And so he came up and the person asked him, he said, so Simon, what do you think about all this? You know, everybody's talking about all this stuff with technology. And Simon in his infinite wisdom talked about human beings are social animal, animals and relationships will always win. There is a small percentage of people who just want a transaction. Most people want a relationship. Invest in your relationships because they are your most valuable asset. And I think he is spot on. In his latest book, The Infinite Player, now they're talking about more larger um, organizations and corporations, but what he said is that a lot of corporations have it backwards. They put all of their focus into taking care of the shareholders. And what Simon says is, no, 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 that's wrong. Take care of your team members. Because if you take care of your team members and build those relationships, your team will take care of your customers and your customers will take care of the bottom line, which will take care of your shareholders. And it's very similar to us. You know, our team members are our clients. And if we take good care of our clients during the transaction and between the transactions, that is how we are going to grow a sustainable and a smart business because people like to work with those that they know, they like, they trust, and they are in flow with.
And we talked about this in our last session. We talked about how can we stay in flow? So just as a recap from last time, we hit on four different areas, the mail, phone, um, social media, and community. So again, really thinking about how can I add value to them? How can I stay connected with them you know, and help them? If it's on the real estate side, maybe it's sharing statistics. Maybe it's talking about and interviewing new builders if you have new builds or talking with investors or financial planners about the power of investing in real estate. On the human side, maybe it's sending out postcards that talk about community events or time change reminders or numbers for important people in the area if they want to have you know, a directory, vendors that can help them. But as we do this, you provide yourself and become the source. Remember, Clara, when, yes. Uh, could you go back over flow, give a brief Sure. definition of what flow is and then sure. maybe even uh, hit on the Ford principle as well? Absolutely. So flow is our terminology for frequency of interaction or what other people refer to as prospecting. So the idea is we want to make sure that we are in flow with our clients. And one of the things we talked about in especially on the, the phone and in having conversations is making sure that we're having Ford conversations. And Ford is an acronym for family occupation, recreations, and dreams. So you wanna make sure that for every conversation you have, you always bring in some aspect of Ford. Now, one of the great ways to do this when you're talking with people, especially if you're on the phone with them, is something that we refer to as the five-step calling process. And the five-step calling process has the salutation as step one, something Ford as step two, the purpose of your call is step three, something forward as step four, and then you're closing in step five. So if I'm calling a current client, let's say I'm working with a buyer, and I want to call them and let them know that their inspection is set up for Tuesday at 9 a.m. I could easily call them and say, hey, it's Claire. I just wanted to let you know we got your inspection set up for nine. If you have any questions, great. Have a great day. That's fine. I'm delivering a level of customer service. But what if I call them and I say, hey, it's Clara. You know, I just wanted to reach out to you and kind of give you an update. But before we do that, you know, how are you doing? How was your 4th of July weekend? Talk with them a little bit. Connect with them on a human level. Then you can get into business. And then you can go ahead and end it and say, well, you know what? I hope you have a great week. I know you've got a lot of work going on. Or I know you're going out of town this weekend. You know, you can sandwich it in before you say goodbye. What we find is steps one, steps three, and steps five are all about customer service, but steps two and steps four are about hospitality. Customer service is the expected. Hospitality is the next level up. Hospitality is all about, all about how you make people feel. Because the reality is, is people are talking about us behind our backs and we want to make sure that the things that they are saying are good things. We want to create that idea of fabled service where the stories that are people that people are telling about the experience of working with us are strong and are all about us taking care of them as a trusted advisor. And remember, it's about how we can help them during the transaction, but also how can we be that source of information? Can we let them know and remind them about the seasonal housing tips that they should be doing to maintain their property? Should we be giving them market statistics every year on the anniversary of their closing date to let them know what the housing market is doing? Can we connect them with vendors that can help them? Can we share funny jokes and funny things that are going on to keep them laughing? Can we send them a handwritten note if they have a pet that passes away? We have the ability to serve them on so many levels. And when you are a trusted advisor, you go to the next level. Because honestly, being a great agent right now and just making the highest level of service possible is not enough. It is a start. But if you want to stay top of mind for them, you want to make sure that you are showing up and giving that extra level. And so again, staying in flow with them. So we've got to find ways of bringing in the mail, social media, phone calls, community events, ways that we can stay connected with them that are adding value. So when we are in flow with them, 
you can bring a lot of your own authenticity, um, but the idea is always, again, making sure it's valuable. So how do we know if it's valuable? Well, this is where you need to start looking at who is in your target audience. So I'll give you an example with my target audience. I'm 48 years old. So my target audience is between the ages of about 45 and 53. Um, dual income households, they have on average three kids that are between the ages of about 12 and 19. The number one challenge for my sphere of influence is time. They're busy. They are carting their kids around. Their kids are, you know, in all sorts of after school programs. So, and they're all working full time jobs. So, time is of the essence. So, when I think about value, I am not going to send them recipe cards. It's not that recipe cards are a bad thing. They just would not add value. My sphere doesn't have time to look at those things and to put those together. Another one that I really love is the American Lifestyle Magazine. That wouldn't be a value to my sphere right now because they don't have time to read those things. What would be a value to them? Maybe a vendor list because if they need to do work on their property, they need to be able to quickly identify who can help them. I maybe will send out coupons or things to maybe home fresh or some of the meal delivery options. Um, I might send out the sporting cards because I know that they watch sports and so they can easily have all the dates of all the games that are coming up when sporting events start again. So you want to start thinking of your target audience. What would be a value to them? So looking at these, we want them to be customized and personalized. And this is both for you as well as for them. So customize and personalize. Make sure that they are branded to you if you're sending out postcards, you know, but personalize also to them. If I'm working with somebody in Denver, I'm not necessarily going to send them statistics for the Boulder market. I would want to make sure that it's customized and more personalized to their area. The handwritten notes are extremely customized and personalized because they're to each individual person. So you want to make sure that we're doing those. And then the combination of art and science just talks about the right brain and the left brain. And the idea that the art side is more of the business side, more of the transaction number side. I'm sorry, the science side is more of the statistical number side. And the art side is more of the human side. So we want to bring in a combination of both of them. So when I was selling full time, I would have two postcards that went out each month. One would go out on the first week of the month and one would go out on the third week of the month. One of them was always um, a motivational quote or housing tips or the sporting cards. That was the art piece. And then the science piece went out in the third week and that was always a just listed, a just sold or a quarterly market update that talked about what was happening. So every month they were getting a piece of art and science. You know, now what we can do is bring all of these into those areas, you know, that we've talked about before. So I gave you an example there with the mailings and the postcards, but you can also bring those in with things that you email out and working on them. Real estate reviews are extremely powerful. They are an annual sort of market update. It is a 30,000 foot view. It is not a valuation on their home. If you think of it, if you've ever watched the Today Show where Al Roker comes out and talks about the weather, he'll talk about this is the weather happening in the United, in the United States. Now let's take a look at what's happening in your neck of the woods. So this is sort of that broad overview of what is happening in their market. So I would just sort of say, you know, in the Denver market, you know, this is what we're seeing. In the Boulder market, this is what we're seeing. Then I might go into their specific neighborhood and just say, in the last six months in your neighborhood, these six homes have sold. I don't worry about size, style, price, or anything because it's not a CMA. It is a tool to educate them and inform them and let them know what is going on. Um, another great thing that you can use, and I just learned about this the other day. Um, actually, I'll show it to you in a couple of seconds. So, but it's using sort of the Zillow Zestimates as a great way to talk with people about the reality of the market. Um, again, we're talking about the calls. I talked about the five-step calling process. Remember focusing on that forward principle and asking them a couple of questions of their family, what they're doing at work, you know, what's happening for fun and any dreams that they have. And again, dreams are just anything in the future, maybe what they're gonna do on their next vacation, you know, 
all those types of things. So we have the two types of calls. We have our customer service calls. So those are the ones that we would make on a weekly basis to our current in process people. Again, delivering that high level of service, making sure we don't want them calling us. We always wanna be proactive in calling them first. But then when we call our sphere, you know, having the Ford principle in there too, and just making it fun. Just asking them how they're doing during all of this. What is happening at work? What happens when we talk about the Ford principle? A few things happen. One is it bonds us with them. It lets us know what's happening because everybody's very favorite topic in the entire world is themselves. The other thing it does is it lets us know if change is happening in their world. And when change happens in their world, oftentimes, a real estate transaction may follow closely behind. So we wanna hear, is change happening in their world? The other thing that we might be able to connect with is what is happening with the people around them. You know, life is kind of like a carousel, like a merry-go-round, and we go around in different circles of, with the people that we hang out with, and birds of a feather flock together. And oftentimes, if I'm having change, someone else in my circle may be having change as well. So you want to be able to look at each of these forward concepts as a circle of their life. And so when you're talking with people, you're listening and you're captivating the opportunity to find out who would they be able to connect me with, those four people. So as I'm talking with somebody in, you know, my personal sphere, maybe I ask them, you know, how's the family doing? And this actually happened the other day. I called one of my best friends and I just said, how's the family? And she mentioned how her sister-in-law was in town for the holidays. And I said, great. And then she said, yeah, she's here for three weeks. And I was like, three weeks, that's a long time. She said, yeah, she's thinking of moving here. Bam, now I have a new buyer lead because I have somebody that I can connect with. I've had people that have said, you know, oh, you know, they're relocating people into our business. Um, you know, my hairstylist is looking to open up her own shop and she's looking for office space. You never know where the opportunities may come from. So you want to be able to talk about that and bring forward in and listen because it will allow you to listen for opportunities that are coming up there. And those can help. Tom. Yes, we have a comment from uh, Patrick. He, he is uh, adding that every mail piece can activate an informed delivery digital campaign for free. There are, uh, these are giving 89% review rates and 37 times the response rate of email, emails or banner ads. And I'm not sure if you know what the delivery digital campaign is, but the post office has a service now where you can, you can see what's being delivered into your mailbox. I get an email every morning at seven in the morning showing me a picture of the mail that's going to pop into my uh, mailbox that day. And in addition to that, there's little digital ads in there. So he's talking about doing these campaigns. And according to him, some of these campaigns are free when you're doing bulk mail. That's really cool. I had no idea. Here we go, post and, office. And, and so we got a few other questions too. And, and Kimberly Morgan's story comes up with one that I was going to ask you anyway. So thank you, Kimberly, for putting it more eloquently than I would have. She's, she wants to know how you get your friends to give you the contact information for the potential leads. Lots of times past clients may say, I, I gave your info to my friend. How does she recommend getting our friends and family to give us the contact information of the person they, they mm -hmm. gave our info to? Yeah, and it's a great question, and you're going to have to find find the way that works for you, um, and it'll take a little bit of massaging, and you'll sort of get to it. What I've gotten to do is, um, you know, saying, oh, you know, are you okay connecting us? You know, would you mind maybe doing an email connection and introducing us? I've also said to people, you know, I know people get busy, and if, if it's easier for you, if you want to just give me their number, I can reach out to them and tell them that, you know, you passed your name on to them. Sometimes it takes a couple of times and you have to remind them, depending on their level of comfort. But what I find is that when you're starting to talk with them more, they actually are proactively referring other people to you, and they're just, you know, saying this. But what I have found is oftentimes I just kind of, I've just kind of come out and said it. I've said, you know, I haven't heard from that person. Would it be okay if I got their phone number and gave them a call? Or, you know, can I get their email? I, I think it also comes back to really knowing the person, your client, the person in your sphere. Because mm -hmm. if you know what really drives them, you can come up with 
the appropriate thank you gift that will really mean something to them. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of use that as well as like, you know, Hey, can you get me the contact information that for that person? I would love to be able to get you another nice dinner at Salty's Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it is that floats their boat. Absolutely. And I love that you brought that up because remember people like those that they are work with those that they know, like they trust and they're in flow with. This is why you have to stay in flow with people between the transactions. Because if I'm only talking with them every couple of years, I'm not going to have that relationship to have the level of comfort to be able to have these conversations. So that's why we have to have that system for flow. Um, Social media, again, we talked about some great social medias. Um, Doing a lot of video right now is fantastic. Sharing articles, sharing information about what's happening in the community. You know, I was taking a class a long time ago for social media and what the lady said is you wanna have a mixture of the three Ps, personal, professional, and passion. So I think as you're on social media, you can bring those things in and you can post things that are the science piece, talking about interest rates or why it's a good time to sell or whatever it may be. And you can post some things on your person, let them see you as a human. And then if you have something you're passionate about, maybe you raise money for a certain foundation, maybe you're passionate about scrapbooking or crafting or whatever it may be. Maybe you're passionate about animals. So you can bring some of those things in as well. I encourage you to stay away from the politics and the religion. I think we all understand that one. But again, you know your sphere better than I do, but looking at these. And then, you know, the events have been good. We've seen a lot of people that are, you know, trying to do some outdoor events on smaller scales right now. We talked about that, you know, before. But the idea is you've got to be able to stay in flow and you have to be able to be of value. If anybody has some great ideas of things that they've been doing, please put them in the um, Q&A box so we can do that. And while I'm doing that, I want to just share with you something else. Uh, Let me go up here. Now, we all know that everybody's going to Zillow. So we don't want to hide from Zillow. Um, And hopefully you can still see my screen on this. But we want to have some real conversations because we know that, and this is great, again, with the real estate reviews, because oftentimes we are giving them information on their personal home, which is not on the market. And if they're going to Zillow to look at what the price of their home could be, their estimate, chances are they are wrong. We know that, but we have a phrase in Ninja, showing is better than just telling. So we're, here's we're seeing, we're, we're seeing your PowerPoint screen. I don't think we're seeing what you want us to see. All right. Let me see. Thank you. So you're not seeing my Zillow screen? No, I think you might've shared your PowerPoint presentation instead of the full screen. All right. I'm, let me go back, see if I can share again. While you're doing that, I want to remind at least um, our brokers, we've got a lot of guests on here, but I'm sure everybody's familiar with um, Cloud CMA. Anybody that's in our brokerage has the ability to sign up for Cloud CMA, and they have a feature similar to what you're talking about, about the Zestimate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they have a, an automated feature that's called um, What's My House Worth? Yeah. And as soon as, as soon as the client clicks on that, they get sent out a custom CMA. It's an automated CMA, but you, every member can, can customize that themselves. Which is great. And, right. And, and I recommend the very first thing you do in big, bold letters on the first page is this is an automated CMA, CMA with a, a wild guess as to what the value of your property is worth. I'll follow up you, follow up with you with a much more accurate mm-hmm. estimate of what your property is worth. Absolutely. Could you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So if you go to just Zillow and then you go all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see the Zestimate. So you can click on the Zestimate. And what it's going to do is it's going to start looking at it from um, a metro area, a state area, but also start telling you the margin of error that they are coming in. But there's two different margins of errors. And this is what we we need to know. And this is what we need to point out to people. You have the margin of error based on actives and you have the margin of error based on off market. So I'm gonna look at this on a national level. So with the active listings, Zillow is within 10% of the sales price, 95.3% of the time. That's not terrible. I think we can do better, but that's not terrible. But this is when they work with active listings. So who are they getting their numbers from? 
they're getting their numbers from us as the brokers because that's the numbers that are in the multiple listing service. So yes, they are going to be more accurate when, they are, when we're doing the work for them. But now let's look at the average homes when they don't have the information from the realtors. Within 10% of the sales price, and if we go national again, 59.2% accuracy within a 10% margin of error. That stinks. But if I'm just wondering, wow, I wonder what my home is worth. The Zestimate is going to be so far off the mark, but this is what our people are going to. So when we talk about being the source of information, we have to let them know, don't go to the Zestimates. If you wanna go there just to kind of get started, but when you really wanna know what your home is worth, come to us because we can give you that accurate information of what you want to do. So don't be afraid of um, you know, Zillow. Talk about Zillow because it's there and it's real, but we've got to also let them know, you know if you really want to you know, have the real information, I'm here. And that's why I love the real estate reviews. The real estate are not, reviews are not there, again, to try to covertly coax them into listing their property. It's a way to educate them and inform them about what's really happening in their neighborhood and to position ourselves as that source of information. So extremely powerful. So any other questions on anything that I've covered so far? So here are some of the things, and this would be the call to action that I have for you from here on in, is I would really encourage you, if you haven't done it recently, Go through your sphere of influence and let's get real about them. Let's see how many households and relationships we really have in there. Let's say, for example, that you have 200 households. How many of them do you really have relationships with versus just an acquaintance? And start seeing, is this an opportunity? One, are there people that I need to move out? And are there opportunities to maybe go deeper? Are there people in there that maybe I haven't talked with in a couple of years? So let's get real about how, who truly is in our sphere of influence. And let's look at those missed opportunities. Let's look at those numbers and start thinking about how can I reinvest back into my sphere of influence? How can I get closer to them? I would encourage you to identify what are three of the best ways for you to stay in flow. Is it through doing more phone calls? Is it upping your game in social media? Do you wanna do some events? But find three ways for you to consistently stay in flow and go deeper with those relationships. Again, we don't want names, we want relationships. And then who do you need that can help you? You know, we are not in this alone. Perhaps there's somebody in your sphere that can help you connect with other people. I had one of my clients and she had somebody in her sphere who was um, on the Denver Broncos. That person was able to connect her with other people in her circle of the Denver Broncos. So she had to go deeper with that relationship and do some work on that relationship. Maybe if you want to do better at going deeper with your relationships, maybe you know of another agent that is just magic when it comes to working their sphere. Take them to coffee, do a Zoom and you know, interview them. What are you doing? If you see other people, even if they're in other industries, doing mailings or doing things on social media or having events, talk with them. Do you need to hire an assistant to help you with your auto flow system to make sure that your social media and your mailings go out? so that you can then you know, focus on doing the direct flow, which is more of the face-to-face -face and the voice-to-voice -voice interactions. You don't need to do it alone, but we do need to do it. Again, there is so much abundance in our own backyard. We don't want you missing out on it. Tom. So you told the story about the billboard with somebody that you've been working with. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that you're coaching a lot of people. So what are some of the other things that they've done that work? And then there's also one question in here. Your, your Zillow demonstration hit home and somebody's asking, where did you find that information? Because they want to be able to use it yeah. to show their client. 
So if you just go to the Zillow homepage, so just Zillow.com, and you scroll down to the bottom under Zestimates, click on the word Zestimate, and it'll pull up the report that I did, and you can see the two different tabs for active or off market, and then you can do it by um, metro region, by state, or by national. So you can find it there. So let's talk about things that are working. So um, I've got, I have okay. one more, one more observation from from an attendee. They say an observation of my business. My last six transactions have been from the monthly mailings that I've sent every month for the last nine years. Sending an annual report every January, settlement statements every tax season, mm -hmm. and of course cards for special occasions. Also, yep. bomb bomb videos are a special way to connect during transactions and to connect on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and those are spot on. So great job, um, whoever it was that did that. You're, you're on the money. And those are the things that are working. What I'm seeing is, again, consistent mailings that have value. Um, even just listed and just sold because it's educating people on what's going on. The handwritten notes are so personal and people do love those. I have a client in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which is basically a second home market. Between what she has closed and what she has under contract, she has already done what she closed in 2019 and it's only July. So she's already going to almost double her business in a second home market during COVID. And I asked her two days ago when we did our call, what, was, what it was that she's doing. She also does a monthly newsletter. And she said, honestly, it's just my calls. I have just been calling my people consistently. She's like, I go through my sphere of influence about once a quarter and make sure that I'm calling them. If I get a voicemail, that's okay. If I see them, that's fine. But I want to have a conversation with everybody in my sphere once a quarter. And she's like, what that comes down to, it's about three people a day. It's about 15 people a week. She's like, but that allows me to stay in flow. Um, other things that are working, events are great. I've had a lot of people do events with movie theaters. And again, they rent out the movie theater and they show a movie. Obviously, we can't do that now, but that does really work. I've had people that have um, done a lot of fundraising events. So I have somebody that is involved with, it's called St. Baldrick's, and they basically shave their heads and they raise money to do that. And um, doing that, people, you know, have donations where they give maybe to St. Jude's or other foundations they work with. Um, another great event is the dumpster where you can get a dumpster and put it in your neighborhood. So as people are spring cleaning, I've had some people that are doing geographic farms or even in their own personal neighborhood, they help to host the garage sale. So they sort of help to sponsor by putting up the signs, running any ads, just kind of going around and talking to people, you know, doing the garage sales. The real estate reviews, which are those annual updates, those are extremely powerful things that are working. But I think the idea is, again, invest in your relationships. How can you invest in your relationships? The number one way is going to be with the calls and the face-to-faces. Those are also free. So you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you've got to get human and you've got to get connected with them. So again, bringing in that mix of the art and science, what I like to do is more of, I will have more of my mailings be the statistical piece so that my phone calls are more of the art piece. I just never wanted somebody seeing my name come up on caller ID and have them be like, oh God, she's going to call me again and talk to me about real estate. So I always wanted to make sure that when I talked with them, it was always about them so that they felt good. So that when they saw my name come through, they always knew it was going to be me. I, I remember a story that somebody told to me and I had them go, I was teaching a class and had them go make some calls. And the person came back and he said, I have to share a story with you. He's like, I also call my people fairly regularly throughout the year. He's like, so it's been, you know, it was probably about a month and a half since I called this one person. And he called the one person and the client said to him, he says, you know, you're the first person I've talked to in three weeks. I was diagnosed three weeks ago with cancer. And I have been in such a depression that I haven't picked up the phone and talked to anyone. But when I saw your name, I knew I wanted to talk to you because whatever it is, whenever I talk to you, I feel good after I hang up the phone. That's the power. Again, it's not about selling. It's about serving. Hey, that's talk. setting the bar high for a telephone conversation. It is. But I mean, those things happen. And, you know, we have more impact than we know. 
And, you know, so many times it's being there. And the thing is, is they may not be doing a, a transaction today, but they're going to know that we were there for them during the good times and during the challenging times. So when they want to make a move, they definitely will call us. But you know what? They're also going to remember us for if somebody else in their world has a change and they're going to be our raving fans and they're going to want to do it. Now, I just received this book. I have not had a chance to um, read it. It is called Generating Referrals Without Asking and it's written by Stacy Brown Randall. And it's basically a five-step plan to get referrals without asking for referrals. So after I read that this weekend, I'll take some notes and share them with you. But don't overcomplicate it. I think what you really want to do is start, you know, saying, am I getting, you know, 80 to 90% of my business from my sphere of influence? If you are, you're probably doing a great job. So maybe look at how can you grow your sphere. But if you're thinking and less than 80% of your business is coming from your personal sphere of influence, you probably can have the opportunity to reinvest some more time and focus into that to get some, some results out of it. Any other questions? Claire, what was the name of that book? Yes, it's called Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. And it's written by Stacy S-T-A-C-E-Y, Brown Randall. And it's Thank got you. a white and green cover. And it's pretty small, so it should be a fairly easy read. So. Thank you. One of, one of the things that I notice is, uh, especially this time of year, you run into somebody you haven't seen for a while and they say, hey, how's it going? You say, oh my God, I am so busy. Thank uh, and you. Yes. And so the, so the person thinks, oh, they're too busy for me or, you know, I don't want to bother them. So yeah. if you can get in the habit of saying, you know, business is great, but I'm always looking for more. If you can just, mm -hmm. or something along that line, yep. it says that it says you're doing well, but it reminds them that you're still looking for business and they will mm -hmm. be a little more inclined to pass along that referral. And another way to respond to that is, well, what have you heard? Because people are hearing everything and we want to know what they hear before we respond. Because if they come back and they hear, oh my God, we hear it's just crazy out there and that there's no inventory. You know, you could respond with saying, well, you know, there are markets that have limited, you know, inventory, you know, this part of the market, but other parts. So, because there's a lot of places that have dual markets. And for a while, what we were seeing is like homes that were 500 and under, there was no inventory. But homes that were over a million, there was a lot of inventory. So I don't want to blanketly say there's no inventory because of what if they're a million dollar buyer? So, you know, we want to, again, what have you heard? Find out where they're getting their information so you can talk about that. What part of the market are you interested in? The listing market, the buying market, the investor market, because you're going to respond to those very differently. So just another way to, you know, pull them in. And they've all heard something. So, you know, it's just a great way to, again, position yourself and answer it as a trusted advisor. Great. Hey, could, can you take just a minute and uh, describe the four day live event that uh, we're going to be doing in the fall and, and kind of tell us what to expect out of that? Absolutely. So our four day installation takes the entire Ninja system and really helps to install it into your world. Again, Ninja is a system. So over the four days, and I know four days sounds like a long time and, and it is, but it's a game changer in your world, in your business. And I'll tell you, by day four, everybody's like, I can't believe it's day four. So what we do is we have the three main components of Ninja, mindset, skill sets, and action. So we go really deep into those. Day one is all about the mindset. We, talk, we get you in the mindset of a champion. We help you do some business planning and just open your mind up to that you know, world and the law of abundance. Day two is all about flow. So we go very deep into how to stay on track with it, how to stay on the path. We do a lot of brainstorming and workshopping with you to help you come up with your flow plan. Day three is all about working with sellers. So we go through the 16 step seller process and we also give a lot of dialogues and some you know, pricing tools and everything like that to help you with sellers and to again, show your value. 
And then the last day is all about working with buyers and we share with you our 10 step buyer process. And what we are finding is that when people go through this and they really implement the system and stay on the path, they are seeing an increase of their business of 20% or more above the market, you know, for their next 12 months and many times even further. So again, it's, it's the system and you get the entire system. It's not one of those things where it's an advertisement for four days, you get everything you need um, and access. And then we have an entire follow-up plan. So we're always sharing, you know, new videos, new ideas, but it's really, again, helping you move from being what we call an accidental broker into a purposeful broker. We have a, a observation from Rita. She says, um, people I'm talking with are frequently fearful right now for various reasons. They want to be able to voice that before any discussion about them moving. And this really boils back. It's something my mom used to say to me all the time, probably because I'm such a chatterbox, but she would say, God gave you one mouth and two ears. You should be listening twice as much as you're talking. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how you get to know people. You, that's the beauty of that, that Ford principle. You ask mm -hmm. the questions and you pay attention and yeah. that's going to take you down a path. And so the next call that you're on, you're asking about their son's football championship that they were preparing for the last time you talked to them mm -hmm. or, or, you know, whatever, whatever was going on in their life, you're actually listening and getting to know them a little more. Absolutely. And fear is also a form of confusion. And when people are confused, they don't want to make a move. So as we listen to them, you know, we want to talk with them and bring them clarity, you know, get them clear on what's happening with interest rates, get them clear on what's happening with appreciations, get them clear on what's happening, you know, with just the market conditions, because the more that we can help answer their questions and bring them clarity, the confusion and the fear goes away. Anything else? You know, you, you could kind of use uh, social media as your little secret birdie too. I do that frequently when, if, if a broker contacts me about joining the brokerage um, and they leave a message or an email or something, I'll, I'll typically look and get to know that person a little bit through their social media. And, and frequently we've got something in common and that gives us a place to, to start talking. Absolutely, you wanna look for those commonalities. Oh, good. Well, we've been going for about an hour, and I just appreciate your time so much today. I hope that you found value. Um, if there's any other questions, I, I can answer a few more questions. But if not, I just really wanted to just share my sincere appreciation to spend time with you today. And just a reminder to everybody, we will send a, a roundup email out that will have a link to the video recording of this and then like the name of the book and some of the other things that we discussed. Excellent. Tom, do you have anything else in closing you want to share? No, I think that was great. I'm looking forward to the in-person installation in the fall and the next two classes. I'm, I'm watching the questions. We've got several thank yous coming through, but I haven't seen another question yet. Oh, great. We'll go. And again, remember, I'm here as a resource to any of you. So if you do have additional questions, um, again, you can email me. It's just Clara, C-L-A-R-A, at ninjaselling.com. Or, you know, find me on social media and connect with me. I love to stay connected and see what you all are doing. And again, just know you can reach out to me at any time. You know, how do they sign up for the I just love the fact that her name is Clara and she has this moment of clarity. I think it is so cool. She did a great job with that, but she sends out these one minute videos and it's, it's 60 seconds and they're very poignant. How do they sign up for that? Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I love my little moments of clarity. Um, I do them on Fridays and they're always posted on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. It's just called uh, Moments of Clarity. So you can search me on my YouTube channel or if you watch it on social media, it, you can go to that page and you can subscribe and then get those every week. Okay, great. Well, we ha we've hit our one hour mark and the questions have uh, slowed down. So thank you again, Clara, and we will see you in a month. All right, see you soon. Take care, everyone.